everyone. Uh, my name is Will McMahon. I'm a member of the Talking About Socialism editorial board. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our latest Talking About Socialism event. Um, at a task discussion we had in October last year, we talked about uh, the rise of the far right across Europe and noted over the last two decades, we've seen a growth of far right parties in terms of their electoral success. The recently renewed success of the far right indicates that it's making further gains across the European continent. Kurt Wilders' Freedom Party in Holland uh, has returned to being the largest party. Uh, there's been a breakthrough by the Chega Party in Portugal, which went from 12 to 50 seats at the most recent uh, general election. And while everybody was uh, in The Guardian and other places was cheering the victory of the Centre Coalition in Poland, uh, they failed to mention uh, they failed to mention that the Confederation Party, which is, I think, possibly a fascist party, um, has doubled its vote in the last six months. Um, most opinion is that the far right is going to do well in the upcoming European elections in June this year. And uh, talking about socialism, we're going to return to that question uh, when we know the results of the European elections in June. This evening, uh, we're going to focus on uh, the rise of the far right in one European country, Italy, the Fratelli d'Italia, or Band of Brothers. It's not just experienced an electoral advance, it's in government. So how did this happen? What's happened to the Marxist left in Italy? Toby Absi, who lives in Livorno, Italy, will introduce the discussion for us tonight. For those of you who don't know Toby, he's a historian and has written extensively on the rise of the fascist right in Italy prior to World War II. Just before Toby kicks us off with a 15 minute introduction, I want to let you know that this meeting is being recorded and will be publicly available. Once Toby's introduced, I'll take questions if you have them for Toby, and then we'll move on to a general discussion about what he's had to say. So with that, I'm going to welcome uh, Toby Absey and ask him to introduce. Over to you, Toby. It would be easy to give a simple short-term explanation for Georgia Maloney's triumph in the September 2022 general election, namely the division between the two main opposition parties, the Partito Democratico PD, which I'll refer to hereafter as the PD, and the Movimento Cinque Stelle, which you might know as the Five Star Movement, and I'll refer to that by its initials M5S from now on. Um, the electoral system currently in use for general elections in Italy is one third first past the post and two thirds PR, but voters are not allowed to split their votes to vote for one party in the, their territorial constituency and another one for the national list contest. Maloney's Fratelli d'Italia, which I'll refer to as FDI from now on, got 26%, the PD 19.1% and M5S 15.4%. But the latter two were competing against each other. As a result, the FDI-led coalition with around 40% of the vote got around 60% of the seats Whilst there is no certainty that had the PD been willing to do a deal with M5S, such a, quote, centre-left, unquote, coalition would have won, the PD's refusal to make such a deal was electoral suicide and contributed to the 36% abstention, the highest ever recorded in an Italian general election. However, as somebody who spent all my working life teaching history, I feel we have to look at longer term causes. Whilst one could go further back than 1991, the end of the Cold War transformed the Italian political system by triggering the implosion of both the traditional governing party, the Christian Democrats, uh, DC, and the main opposition party, the PCI, as well as most of the smaller parties. Moreover, a 1993 referendum got rid of the PR election system of the 1946 to 92 period. On the right side of the political spectrum, the collapse of the nominally centrist DC 
opened the way for a succession of openly right-wing populists. The first of these was Silvia Berlusconi, who dominated Italian political life from 1994 until at least 2011. It is worth pointing out that one of the worst things Berlusconi did was to legitimize the Italian neo-fascists who he brought into his 1994 coalition and into all his subsequent governments. Maloney first came to national prominence as a youth minister in one of his later governments. On the left-hand side of the political spectrum, the 1989-91 period saw the slow disintegration of the PCI. The majority of the old PCI became the PDS, which in Eng English would be Democratic Party of the Left, and then the DS, Left Democrats, before fusing with some of the left, in inverted commas, of the old Christian Democrats to form the PD in twenty in 2007. In case anybody is wondering, the PD's name was a deliberate copy of the US Democrats. The PDS slash DS slash PD moved further and further to the right and the nominally, quote, center left, unquote, governments in which it participated were responsible for more privatizations, labor market deregulation, outsourcing, et cetera, than Berlusconi. The PDS slash DS slash PD with its um, repeated support for technocratic governments, um, Dini 94 to 96, Monti 2011 to 13, and Draghi uh, 20, 21 to 22, keep subordinating the class interests of organized labor and working class pensioners. Dini and Monti both cut pensions to the alleged quote, national interest, unquote. The PD's 2007 founding document made no pretense of even being social democratic. It was a peer to neoliberal globalization, ironically, on the very eve of an international crisis of the banking system. Matteo Renzi, the PD prime minister from 2014 until 2017, was more forthright in his neoliberalism than any previous PD leader. And his Jobs Act uh, was the final nail in the coffin of the worker statute of 1970, destroying what remained of the working class gains of the hot autumn of 1969. The Jobs Act led to a split between the PD and the CGIL, the biggest trade union confederation, and the one that used to be linked to the PCI. At this juncture, I better point out that there was a mass left alternative to the PDS slash DS slash PD between 1991 and 2008, namely Rifondazione Comunista, which at one stage had 100,000 members and sometimes got nearly 10% of the vote. I have not got the time this evening to discuss its decline in detail, at least not in this I could answer questions later. I just want to make the point that one of the main reasons for the emergence of M5S as a serious force in Italian politics in 2013 was the absence of communists from the Italian parliament after 2008. Rifondazione, for all its flaws, did give the working class a degree of genuine representation within the institutions whilst M5S, despite its intermittently left-sounding criticisms of the establishment, does not. In case anybody imagines that the citizens' income brought in by M5S in 2018 and destroyed by Maloney last year is the same as the universal basic income popular amongst those intellectuals who babble about the, quote, precariat, unquote, it was not. It was closer to the British Job Seekers Allowance, even if the inefficient Italian form of workfare meant that there were fewer chances of employment centers uh, finding you a badly paid, unsuitable job. However, the appeal of this scheme to the Southern Italian unemployed explains why M5S 
uh, was ahead of both the PD and FDI in some southern constituencies in the 2022 general election. One might argue that the latter day M5S of Giuseppe Conte is an improvement on Beppe Grillo's original, but it retains Grillo's racist views on immigration, even if the full horrendous package of anti-migrant racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, and homophobia accompanied by contempt for any form of genuine democracy and bizarre adulation of the internet, all of which were associated with the aged comedian is a thing of the past. In case anybody wonders what happened to Grillo, Conte gave him a 300,000 euro annual sinecure on condition he makes no intervention into day-to-day -day politics. Maloney is not the first far-right racist demagogue to dominate Italian politics in the last decade, but she is far more cunning than the Lagos uh, Matteo Salvini, who turned the old regionalist Lega Nord into a nationwide ultranationalist party in 2013. Salvini had his moment of glory when his party polled 33% in the 2019 European election before overreaching himself a few weeks later, bringing down Conte's first government, which was an M5S Lega coalition, and demanding, quote, full powers, unquote, for himself, in what appeared to be an alcohol-fueled outburst sitting on a beach. Um, after a period of opposition, Salvini took his party into Draghi's largely technocratic national unity government, in 2021 to 22. Maloney, by keeping out of Draghi's government, was able to present herself as a more consistent anti-establishment oppositionist. This explains why the FDI, which only got 2% in the 2013 general election, 4% in the 2018 general election, and 6% in the 2019, European election was able to rise to 26% in 2022, largely at the expense of the rest of the right. Berlusconi's Forza Italia was weakened by its aged leader's physical decline, and he since died, and Salvini's Lega seemed to have compromised with the system. Both fell to around 8% of the vote in 2022 becoming Maloney's somewhat resentful junior partners. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Obviously, I'll answer any questions people have or reply to comments that people might make. Thanks for that, Toby. It's, that was a really interesting introduction. There was You packed an enormous amount into it. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask people if there, there are any kind of questions that they have. If you can use the electronic hand, um, that would be good because I don't have you all on screen. Okay, uh, Caroline. Yeah, um, just a quick question on the Toby. You were talking about the split vote. They were, weren't allowed to split the vote. Is that like how we vote separately for council councillors and we vote for it's MPs? What? Yeah, what you can't do um, in Italian general elections, what you can't do is what you can do, or at least you could do when I was last in England in the GLA election, or, or I think the Welsh Parliament and the Scottish, uh, sorry, the Welsh Assembly and the Scottish Parliament, uh, where you could uh, vote for one lot in the uh, territorial constituency and vote for another grouping uh, in the uh, proportional section that you're not allowed to do that in an Italian general election. So that though you can, um, though it's slightly more complicated in a way than I suggested in the, the talk in that uh, you can vote for a par any party within the coalition. Uh, it's not simply that if you vote, you know, you'd have to vote for the, the PD supported candidate in the territorial thing. Um, and then in the national list thing, you could vote for um, 
the, the Green Left Alliance, because that was allied with the PD as part of the coalition. So you could vote for, for a part of the same coalition, but what you couldn't do is vote for M5S, which was entirely separate and competing directly against the PD and its smaller allies. Um, so you can't you can't do what you could do, and I assume still can do in the GLA election, mm -hmm. where okay, I, I sometimes voted Labour territorially and Green in the the list. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, thanks. That, okay. Yeah. Any any more kind of questions for clarification or information? Okay. Okay, so who would like to um, speak first? You get people get three minutes. Um, you stick if you stick to three minutes, uh, we get more than one round. Usually, you get another go. Um, who would like to come in? Matthew. Matthew, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, that, I mean, it's a very interesting situation, you know, obviously with the, um, you know, the various conditions, right? The, 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 other, the other funny thing, which is, it's, you, know, you mentioned Salvini of the Lego. He's also got an obsession with the, the PCI. Um, you know, he thinks he's the inheritor of the PCI, which is incredible. Um, and, and, and actually bought a, his organisation that owns this building, I think, um, either it is or is opposite the, the old PCI headquarters. Um, you know, he, he, at the same time, he also has a deal with the Indragheta. Um, <laughs> and as a good northern lad, he has a seat in the Indragheta territory in the south. Um, you know, so there's all sorts going on. But the, the, the thing is also, it's, it's, it's the whole question of, well, do you go into, you know, because obviously, you know, the political collapse of the PCI, you know, you could see that you look at some of the stuff and they're clearly heading towards neoliberalism, you know, before the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. And then, of course, once you have the collapse of the Soviet Union, the end of, the end of, of, of communism, as far as they would see, then, then, of course, they've been given free reign to go to, 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 to neoliberalism and entirely abandon any notions of being on the left, uh, which they did. And, of course, the, how could they retain the support of the working class at that, at that, at that, on that basis, as you, as you don't learn? Um, and the problem with the referendum, of course, is it kept going into government. You have this this, this issue of you know first um, raised by Miller on in France, of course, before the First World War. Is it do do revolutionaries or people who you know, claim to be revolutionaries or on the left or whatever actually enter bourgeois governments? <laughs> you know, uh, and the answer should be no. Why would that? Okay, I think Matthew just stalled. Hang on. Nick, I'm going to bring you in. Thanks, Will. Yes, uh, and I think that, you know, the crisis of Italian politics goes, goes back away, a long way further than that, you know, to the, actually the Second World War. You know, and you can see, I mean, it's an unresolved, it's an un unresolved crisis all the way through. Um, and the question is, okay, how does the left then express itself, you know, with all these, all of these things collapsing? And as you say, the other thing, of course, is that the, 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 the huge abstention, because obviously people have nothing to do vote for. Maloney is very interesting in those terms, and, and, and is a parallel to with a number of other fascist uh, types. I mean, Maloney, as I understand it, sort of sees herself as being a proper fascist. As opposed to say Feeney, who who tried to abandon bits of fascism and was was then was then hammered by 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 the proper fascists as somebody you know, ren renegade and all the rest of it. Um, but she abandoned the the, the, the street legions of, of of fascism, which is a central point. I mean, I think the, the key feature of fascism, as I've been pointing out, is it is an instrument for the destruction of the workers' organisations. You know, Matthew, and, and, I'm gonna, Matthew, yeah. I'm going to stop you there, mate. Okay. On that well, sentence, I'm going to stop yeah. you. <laughs> okay, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Will. Uh, thank you very much, Toby, for a really interesting discussion. And the, there's so many issues that arise. Uh, just picking up on the last point that uh, Matthew was beginning to make about 
the fascist program, but without the at this stage to uh, recourse to uh, street squads. Uh, there was an article recently in the Financial Times that outlined the debate about the proposed constitution that's being put forward by Maloney, which, as I understand it, she's proposing the election of a uh, basic head of state directly, which would, uh, if it's successful, would appear to me to, to completely, well, largely put power into the hands of an almost elected dictator, um, very Mussolini-like, or perhaps um, Louis Bonaparte in France in the post-1848, 1851, second half of the 19th century. So I wondered if Toby could say a bit more about that constitutional debate. Um, secondly, as I understand it over the last 20 years, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that vast swathes of what used to be solid red peachy voters have gone over to voting for the Lega or other right-wing organizations reflecting the essential capitulation of the PG to, as Matthew said, neoliberalism. And I just wondered what Toby thought about the proposition that the collapse of the PG vote and the collapse of the vote in whatever variance it went through, PDS, PD, etc., was laid not just by its capitulation to neoliberalism, but by the almost inherent nationalism of the PC in its earlier Stalinist formation, because the same thing has happened in France, where working class areas that voted for the, the French Communist Party have gone over to vote for Le Pen. Um, and there's an interesting discussion perhaps to be had at some stage about the the national road to socialism of the Stalinized sections of the Comintern, including the Italian. And again, just picking up on something that Matthew talked about, Millerandism and the discussion in the Marxist Second International before its capitulation that rejected the idea of going into a coalition government with the bourgeoisie. I'm going to stop you now, Nick. Two yeah, points, just... If I may, one, yeah. one is it's not new in, in Italy because you 45 to 47, unbelievably, the PG was in government with the Christian Democrats. And then post-73, you had the historic compromise, which pr was proposing that as a, a persistent strategy. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Toby, I'm going to take a few more, and then if you can come back on some okay. of the points you've heard. All right. Uh, Soraya. Yes, we're um, having this discussion, but with the the basic premise of um, talking about socialism, uh, that, is, that there is a need for a, internationally, for um, a genuine communist stroke socialist party and really this discussion and the history of Italy as so many other places shows the absolute need for it because it, it, it can't just be in name it's got to be in policies and so Nick's just touched on a, a couple of things that the, the Italian Communist Party did um, it, the Italian Communist Party was a massive I had massive membership uh, and um, it, it then went down the road of, of um, latterly before it, there was the split of, of the, the, what they call the third way. So understandably, ostensibly a, a rejection of Stalinism, um, but also really embracing, so not capitalism, but this imaginary third way, which essentially was um, moving towards social democracy without so much of the, without the reforms that were, had been possible in the past. 
Uh, and then, of course, you had the split and the, 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 those who were loyal to the ideas of communism, some of them also loyal to the ideas of Stalinism, but but, but predominantly um, uh, when communist refoundation, as its name says, was um, was formed with the idea of um, genuine communism. But then you've had this uh, really um, giving in to the pressure and without a I come back again to we're not proclaiming ourselves as the new communist party by any stretch of the imagination but just arguing that we need one because if you just carry on with the uh, what, what happened in Italy was that there was a complete capitulation to the idea really that you without saying it that you can't have communism you can't have a different society and you can't get rid of capitalism you just got to try and tweak it and take it on a, on a better route. Uh, and so it, 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 this discussion is fundamental to, to all the discussions that we're having, because it's, it's, it's the, uh, the question that, um, that many will ask, how is it that uh, Italy that had the biggest uh, communist party outside um, the Soviet, controlled areas um how is it that gone to having a, a, a maloney as prime minister and it, it is that it, it's not a um being alarmist to say that the policies that she's putting forward we are seeing um the attempts to do that in other european countries and that this is just going to Increase, in, in, increase if there is no uh, left, and I don't just mean left reformist, but but communist, strong communist voice to oppose those ideas. Thank you, Soraya. Um, only five seconds over. Car Caroline. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, she... She did say she'd been called far right, but apparently she calls that a smear. And she said if she was in this country, she'd be a Tory. I mean, you know, similar from what I can see, there's a lot of similar uh, policies and ideology that she's got, that some Tories have got. Well, most Tories have got. Um, the anti-immigration stance, uh, Jacob Rees Mogg is anti-abortion, isn't he? Um, there's just so much stuff, but she's got she, at the moment. She, she also said, she also said she praised Mussolini as a good politician in that everything he did, he did for Italy. Um, she also wants to uh, liberation day from Nazi fascism, World War Two, to be substituted with a National Unity and Armed Forces Day. And I note that she, although she did initially condemn. You know, she was horrified by the killing of all the children in Gaza. She supports Israel. Um, so there's the militarism thing there, isn't there, um, of fascism. Uh, she also, she's going to stand, I think. I know she's linking up. She's Is she president of the far right, of the right wing, far right group in, in Europe, uh, which is dominated by the Polish, uh, Polish uh, party? And also, she, yes, yeah, she's going to stand to be a European MP, even though as Prime Minister she couldn't take that position. Um, but she's doing it for publicity and for propaganda purposes. And so if she wins, the next in line of the group will get that position if she doesn't want to step down. Um, so somebody said she's about the Constitution and is it President just was looking for, it was Nick, wasn't it? Looking to... Um, these things point in the, in that in that direction. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, yeah. And she also has is enabling employers on the employment thing and unions thing to bring in shorter contracts to take people on just for a year or two years. Um, she's flirted with uh, climate change denial, and she's doing what spending a lot of the climate budget on a deal with is it Africa. 
but it looks like a lot of that is going to be um is 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 going to be to boost economic ties and curb migration um and that there could be fossil fuel promotion involved now italy had really really high climate change hasn't it? it's had massive temperatures 45 to 50 degrees as it been and 82 percent of people accept that climate change is man-made because she's in a bit of a a bit of a sticky position on that one possibly so that that would be a reason why people shouldn't vote for us surely um um yeah to thanks, thanks, you thanks, thanks 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 Will, are you able to, forgive me for jumping in, are you able to see the chat? Because Wanda has asked a question. No, so, could you put it to me? That's all right. Yeah. So it, it says, this is from, from Wanda, um, is it that most voters are voting for right-wing parties, e.g. because of immigrants mm. or because of the voting system or because of divided left-wing parties? Shall I read okay. that again? That, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you get that, Toby? Um, yeah. Whether it's, whether it's the voting system, whether it's divided left, or whether it's immigration. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, get you to come back for a little bit, and then we can push the conversation along on what you've heard. I mean, I just like to say, just like to put in one thing for myself, which is around the question of the word fascism, um, because it's used quite loosely these days. Um, and I'm just wondering whether it is proper to describe her as a fascist or whether your view is that she is a fascist, but she is not, you know, she's not going into the phone box to put on the Mussolini suit until she feels safe enough to do so. Um, anyway, just just chuck that to you and the other issues that people have raised. What do you make of the conversation so far? Oh, well, uh, a whole load of things, Ray, so I don't think I can necessarily um, reply to, 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 to uh, all of them. Um, but, um, okay, let's start with the um, question of, of fascism. Yes, I think she is a fascist. I get fed up with people calling her a post-fascist. I mean, the the point is, as I I think it was Matthew who, who said it, that... Uh, she and the people around her, like Ignazio La Russa, whose middle name is Benito, I mean that literally, uh, he's, he's in his 70s now, um, and his father was a fascist before him, um, did a fascist all his life. I mean, they, they, they regarded uh, Gianfranco Fini uh, as a traitor. There is no doubt about, about that. Uh, FDI uh, was founded by the, the hardest of the um, people who had been neo-fascist because... I mean, some of, some of them drifted into forts of Italia and sort of passed themselves off as conservatives. But she she wasn't having that. She wanted to to found her own organisation, and and clearly there, there is a direct line, MSI, um, AN. But then AN wasn't really good enough, particularly when it fused with forts of Italia. And, and um, she's the fact that. There hasn't been much street violence. Okay, there's been a little. There was an incident uh, of February of last year in Florence uh, of a uh, fascist youth organization beating the hell out of school kids, leftish, leftish but unorganized school kids out, outside of school at about eight in the morning, you know. So there had, and that's probably not the only incident, but it's certainly the most well known one of her people connected with her party actually engaging in street violence. Um, I accept that by and large they, they haven't. Um, and you see, the attack on the CGIL headquarters, which was um, in October uh, of 20... Sorry, I, I, I anyway, bef before she'd gained uh, office before mm -hmm. she won the election. The, that attack was Forza and Morva, which is a sort of open in your face neo-fascist organization, which, you know, but it, it was allowed to devastate the headquarters of the biggest trade union confederation. And frankly, I don't think the police chief in, in Rome, who is now currently the interior minister and is leader <coughs> of the Labour, um, did do anything to stop it. Not seriously. 
So, so, but I mean, so this is in the wings all the time. But I mean, the point is the, the trade unions are, are, are relatively weak. Uh, and, and though they engage in periodic um, general strikes about once a year, uh, or at least the CGIL and the UIL, the, the chisel, the, the one that was originally linked to Christian democracy, uh, doesn't really even do that. But I mean, they do you know, periodically show some signs of life, but but they're not strong enough for you to really if, need to do. Look, I, I think what is in her mind is copying the Hungarian route. I think that that is the the idea, seeing what Orban has done that you, you do it rather more gradually and in a less obviously violent way, suppress uh, dissent uh, by weakening independent institutions, whether it's uh, the, the magistracy or um, NGOs or, or, or whatever. Um, the press, obviously, and the television. Um, but um, I, I think it's the Hungarian model that's in her mind as the route to take. But I, I think she is a fascist at heart. Um, though she is uh, suing um, uh, Professor Kanfara, who, who, I mean, okay, he is a, to be honest, he's a bit of a Stalinist communist, but I mean, uh, he's a great classicist, a well-known Italian academic, and, and she's suing him for libel for having uh, called her a neo-Nazi, um, so that... Um, she, she doesn't like being called, but I mean, she won't call herself an anti-fascist. She, she could have done so. I mean, however hypocritically, she could have done so as a tactic, but she's chosen not to. And I think it's stupid liberals, as liberals, or at least some liberals keep doing, asking her to disassociate herself from fascism. Well, why is she going to disassociate herself from fascism? That is her belief system, uh, fundamentally. Um, Okay, now I better get on to, 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 to other things. Um, yeah, she, she is standing for the European Parliament and the purpose of being the top of the list in all five of the European uh, Parliament constituencies is to maximise their vote. Uh, but she, she's her, her, her name will be on the electoral symbol. Uh, and she now wants to be on the ballot paper uh, using um, a, a strange sort of um, thing which... Um, George, which basically would translate as Georgia Maloney, known as Georgia. I mean, as if she's known as anything else. I mean, that is a baptismal name. So, I mean, there have been occasions. Okay, I mean, I know from having stood in some elections in um, the UK years ago um, that, that I was sometimes uh, Tobias Abzi known as Toby or something like that on, on a ballot paper, as far as I can recall. But I mean, and there are Italian uh, politicians whose um, well-known first name wasn't their actual baptismal name who've had that on their um, thing, but she, she wants to be Georgia. I mean, it's a, it's a sort of big personality cult. Um, I mean, her, her autobiography was Io Sono Georgia. Um, I am Georgia. Um, so so um, yes, you're standing to your European Parliament. Um, um, yeah, ra racism is, is central um, to their appeal. Um, I mean, I, I think um, that though, though they obviously do, and the Lega did before, have some working class support. I mean, in the case of the Lega, it was um, Northern workers in, in small workplaces. Um, I still think the bulk of her electors, as far as I could tell from any kind of bourgeois sociology in the United States elections seem to come from the um, you know, unemployed and petty bourgeoisie rather than the working class proper. Um, okay. um, and, um, but racism is, I mean, more than 50% of the population thinks that immigrants are a danger to security, to safety, you know, public safety, this sort of stuff. I mean, I, I know it's bad in the UK and maybe it's got worse in the last five years, but I mean, I assume it's not quite as bad as this, the uh, number of people that, that agree in an open opinion poll to, 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 to you know, what I would regard as racist statements. So yes, raci racism is important. Um, okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether the um, 
thing that, that sorry, somebody was saying, whether it was Nick or Matthew, I can't remember now, um, of, of uh, the comparison with the FN in France and the, you know, the, the, P, the PCF in latter years were taking a racist stance, I remember, in, in terms of um, immigrants living in, in the Banlieue in, in the Red Belt around, around Paris. And, and the, you know, the, you could see some uh, possibilities of, of drift from, from the nationalism of French Stalinism to, to, to the to the FN or the RN as it now is, but FN as it was then. Um, I'm not sure that the the, the PG as such was was ever um, that racist. Yes, I accept accept it's nationalist in the sense that and all um, all the Stalinist parties were were told to do that after the end of the coming form anyway. You know. Um, 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 let me let me let me just hold you there, Toby, because you can come back later. Yeah, okay. that's that was all really interesting. That was really interesting. Do do we? I just want to see if people have comments they want to make. Okay, somebody else has just come in. Any other comments that people want to make, Caroline? Yeah, I just want to make a quick comment. I know Kit Clarenberg has written an article recently. He works with the Grey Zone. Um, he's got his own podcast now as well. But he's written an article recently about the CIA and the influence and how that took down the left in Germany. And they've been very involved in Western Europe, uh, taking any form of the left down, um, with all their military bases, et, et cetera, an enormous presence. Um, apparently some guy called Philip Aggie, 1978, wrote a book, Dirty Work, the CIA in Western Europe. Um, so it's been it's been going on for years. Um, they just wanted to ask Toby if he if he knew anything about that happening in Italy. Thanks. Um, well, it, okay. It, let well, me let me hold you there, Toby. Let me get a few more comments in. If you note okay. that down, and I, I will come back to you, Nick. You need to unmute. Thanks, Will. Yeah, thanks, uh, Toby, for coming back on some of my points. Um, take your point about um, the difference between nationalism and racism. Um, maybe something for another day. I just want to pick up on the question from Wanda that Soraya read out, and just above it, there's one that's similar from Kirsty. Um, is it because they are... <laughs> and... Um, now going to them because they're not getting anywhere with the other groups, which is some, somewhat similar to Wanda's. To me, it appears that this is an international phenomenon, that the collapse of the organised socialist left um, basically gives no serious organised alternative to the present system in the face of a crisis um, a crisis of the economy, a crisis of constitution, a crisis of democracy, the climate change crisis, um, wars. The, the, the left in Britain is in a state of disarray. It hasn't reached yet the state of the disarray in Italy. But if, and, and perhaps Toby could develop this point, I mean, if, if we were in Italy, to whom would we be orienting? To whom would we be looking? Because if we go back to the 20s and the 30s, as a point that we've made in these discussions before, in a period of crisis, people look for alternatives, what, uh, what, what are called by the centre as extreme alternatives. And it, the alternatives in the 20s and the 30s, post the Russian Revolution, were Bolshevism, and fascism. Now we've got, however you call it, a, a variant of fascism, but we don't have the, the Bolshevism. We don't have the left alternative. And so the form that fascism takes doesn't have to be so strident. It doesn't have to be so violent. It doesn't have to be the street squads in the way that it was in the 20s and the 30s. Because as you've just pointed out, Toby, 
the trade union movement and the working class movement, the organized working class movement in Italy is not very strong. And that's probably replicating the position in most countries. And so what is lacking is the point that Soraya raised for organized communism, organized socialism, organized working class action, trade unionism, to actually start positing a real alternative, not just reforming the system with a little bit of extra pepper and salt or spice, but actually changing the system. And if we started putting that forward, we would answer the racism. We'd explain that it's capitalism, not migrants. It's not what color you are or where you come from. It's the system. But there doesn't seem to be any strong voice coming from the working class. And perhaps that figure that you gave, was it 36% of abstentions in yeah. the election? I mean, that is huge. Um, in Britain, we've had 25, 30, 40% in some elections. There is a massive constituency there that sees all the parties as being the same. Yeah. And they I'm going to have to stop you there, Nick, because I'm giving you a little bit more time. Um, are there there are there are plenty of people in the room I know who who could engage in this conversation, and you're welcome to do so if you yeah you have a view. Um, I'm going to um, take the kind of chair's privilege of asking that you've been asked about the influence of the CIA on Italian politics. You've been asked about um, what would you, how would you orientate if you were on the left in Italy um, and how the situation has changed from the 1930s and there was Bolshevism then, et cetera, whatever characterization one would make of that. Um, and I'd kind of want to pose you a question about the, the dictatorship of capitalism, yeah, that it can take many different forms and because of what Nick pointed out about the the weakness of the working class, you might not need squadristry and all that kind of stuff. But if you start to take that out of your of your definition of fascism, then surely it turns into something else. It's it can be a dictatorship of capital, a kind of a muffling of democratic institutions, like Orban, yeah, a kind of a suppression of constitutional courts a kind of a restriction on the media but that's not fascism it might be a really hideous society in which to live where with an open dictatorship of capital but it's not fascism um so let me chuck those three things at you toby the cia left orientation and capitalist dictatorship and how it looks to you from where you are okay um the cia um i think yeah, the CIA are probably not taking as much of an interest in Italy as they did during the Cold War, where they took an enormous interest in Italy because of the fact they, whatever we might think of, of the PC, um, they saw it as a threat. They saw, they, saw the, they saw the historic compromise as a threat. And I, I mean, I, I will, um, uh, okay, some people will say I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I think I think they had a hand in, the, in Moro's uh death uh i mean i i think um that the some of the leaders of the red brigades were, were not uh you know some of them were sincere ultra left idiots okay uh but but others were being manipulated or double agents or whatever you'd like to call it i don't want to go into detail about about, about the, uh, the red brigades but I, I think that they were used uh at times uh, by the Americans. The Americans, the CIA and the Italian Secret Services certainly used the, the, the neo-fascists, the more extreme ones, the ones who planted the bombs. So the, the, during the whole period uh, of the Cold War, and I think it sort of became particularly marked for um, from 69 through to the early 80s when it, the, the left got, was already getting weaker, but during those periods, during the, the height of, of working class militancy, yes, I think the Americans were taking a great interest in what was going on in Italy, but I'm not, I'm not sure that the CIA are as interested anymore um, since the, the kind of threat that they saw in the, the PC isn't there. Um, 
okay, they might they might be worried about um, I I Italian parties that that are. Uh, uh, Got some links with Putin. That that that, that is is possible. Uh, they prefer Maloney uh, to Salvini in that regard uh, because she is always going on about how Atlanticist she is. Well, uh, so Salvini at one stage certainly looked as if he was taking money from Putin, and he's still not that keen on uh, criticizing him. Uh, if, for example, over the Navalny um, death. Um, but um, okay, that CIA. I won't get. Too uh, long about that one. Um, if we look look at the situation currently on, on, on the left, um, Riffin does say it still exists. I mean, it, it 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 never got back to national parliament after two thousand and eight. It it still it still exists. It's probably got about ten thousand members. And I think that thing that is probably an accurate uh, figure. I don't think it's like the SWP making it up. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I think there are still about about that that many members, and there there were other smaller communist organisations, most of, of which were at one stage in the uh, in Refundazione, but split from it at var various points. Um, some some of which uh, I would call sort of soft Stalinist, which is the the, the people who still who have now retaken the name of PCI and the symbols of the PCI, um, who are the sort of people who. Kasu to the pro-Soviet strand in uh, the PG, and then even in the early days of Refondazione, um, his, his lot, that's where they come from, the people who were in Refondazione up until 98, and they now, they now use the symbol and the name, uh, but they're sort of, I would say, soft as compared with another block called the Party de Comunista, uh, who I would regard as hard Stalinist, and you've also got a a, you know, a mad group called the Karkud and nothing to do with with Fondazione, who, who who chant Viva Stalin and v, not just Viva Mao, but Viva Stalin on <laughs> possible occasion. But um, you've all, you've also, I think, still you've still got, as far as I'm aware, two Trotskyist groups. I mean, the the, the thing about the um, who were in Fondazione, um the um, the the one the one who is the official section of the FI, uh, uh, as far as I understand it, they're, they're probably, you know, like if the FI as a whole supports the Ukrainian nationalists, I presume they do, but uh, I have no contact uh, with them. Um, there, there was a harder Trotskyist group called Fer Ferrando's Party to Communista de Laboratory, the Communist Workers' Party. I presume that still exists, but I haven't sort of Come across it my, myself. So, the, 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 and I probably have a fragments I haven't mentioned, but Rifandazen is clearly the, the, the biggest um, communist group. Um, the, um, the problem in terms of them getting parliamentary representation, which is a worthwhile thing to have, quite frankly, um, you, for the Italian parliament, I think you need three, I think you need 3%, as far as I can recall. Um, for the European parliament in Italy, you, you need 4%. But um, they, they keep changing their allies and being parts of different um, blocks. Um, th this time, we found that's the only um, a, a part of something called um, Pace uh, Terra Dignita. I'm not sure whether they've got enough signatures. I think we'll know in a couple of days whether they have got enough signatures to stand in the European election. Uh, but it involves people who uh, are against the war in Gaza and against the Ukraine war, but 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 may not be that left wing. Some of them are on other issues, and they're, they're sort of in with them. And at the last general election, that they were trying to copy Mélenchon with Nupes and came up with something called the Union Unione Popolare, and that, that that seems to have disintegrated. Not all their allies in that are still in it, and so on. I mean. It, each time they stand in an election, they seem to stand under a different name. So that doesn't strike me as being terrifically helpful. Um, in terms of, okay, I'm going to say something a bit nice about um, not, you know, about the current PD leader. All right. Um, she was elected in a prime a primary, which is an open primary. Uh, and let reverse the members vote because the, mem the members vote had supported the more right wing of the two candidates and Ellie Schlein was picked in, in the, you know, about a million people voted in, in, in the open primary. 
um, including people who were clearly, like myself, to the left. To the left of the PD, I would never vote for the PD if I had a vote in Italy. But, um, but um, you know, Ellie has tried to move the the party to the left, but she has not been effective in terms of dealing with the apparatchiks on the right wing who, you know, dominate their council members, their mayors and all that sort of thing. I mean, it, it, you know, there are bits of all the, this. She, she's trying to mend fences with the trade unions and raise the question of the minimum wage and, um, you know, and not keen on, on the Jobs Act and neoliberalism and the things that Renzi did. But I mean, it, it's sort of, it, in the end, I think the right the party will get her on something uh, in the way that the right of the Labour Party got Corbyn. But I mean, she 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 is better, and precisely because she is, you know, she's half Italian, half American Jewish. I mean, she she is actually serious about anti-fascism and anti-racism in a way that the right wing the, that uh, the PD isn't. Um, so I mean, I, I think you know she she is better. Uh, um, she genuinely hates Maloney, not not as just as a political adversary, but I think she does regard her as an enemy because she's aware that Maloney is anti-Semitic at heart. Uh, I mean, um, on the, the question of, of Gaza, um, Ellie does support a ceasefire, has done from the start, in a way that, say, Starmer didn't. And in the Italian parliament, Maloney's lot, didn't have, the, they abstained in the call for the ceasefire. They didn't have the nerve to say they were a guinea. Um, so the, the, that is like, I'm not in any way, um, you know, saying that Italy isn't totally complicit in it, it, with, with, with Israel in terms of its arms sales and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but, but you know, um, uh, Eli Schlein has been better than, say, Starmer on, on the question of, of the Gaza war. Um, <laughs> Okay, okay, look, look at the the group I would vote for if I had a vote in the European elections, because I think they'll go over the threshold, is the Green Left Alliance. And the reason I would do it is because they're trying to get Ilaria Salis out of jail. This is the, the, the woman who the Hungarians have been holding for about 13 or 14 months for, for having biffed a few, allegedly biffed a few Nazis, uh, uh, you know, in February of, uh, of, of last year. And, and who appeared in the Hungarian courtroom in, in, in chains, literally. Um, so the, the, um, the, the Green Left Alliance put her uh, as one of their leading candidates, and clearly that the, 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 she would be freed. The Hungarians would have to free her if she were elected to the European Parliament. So, so I, I, I would, on those grounds, it might, may seem you know, opportunistic, but I, I, I think you know, she should be freed. She is... She is a political prisoner and should be freed uh, and has been subjected to the most horrible conditions in jail and in the courtroom in Hungary. Um, so I, I, would, I, would vote, I would vote for them because I don't think that even if the, um, even if Pace, Terra, Dignita, the, 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 the list that the Griffin Darcione are supporting in this election actually do get enough signatures to stand, I, think, I don't think they'll even get over the threshold. So it'd be a wasted vote anyway. Um, All right. Can I ask if there's people want to make further contributions? Will, there's a, Will Joe Deviney has posted a very interesting series of quotes. Can you read yep. them? Um, hang on a second. Let me just have a look. Sorry, it's very, very difficult on this. Uh... Joe, do you not want to come in and speak to them? Oh, he's not not free to speak. OK, so uh, he says, hi, thanks very much for the talk. Um, Italian neo-fascists seem to agree with the argument put forward in the meeting, i.e. the collapse of the PCI. So I just wanted to add some fairly recent quotes from the Italian right wing. Uh, one is a cardiologist called Roberto Maggi operating in a working class neighborhood in Rome says, we do what the old communist party stopped doing in the poorer areas in the outskirts of the city. The communist party is not there anymore, but Casa Pound is there and now helping. So it sounds like they've got a mass strategy there. Uh, second quote is uh, the Patriot Network said, my grandparents told me that at the time of fascism, they got a lot of support from the state. 
Today, there are 5 million Italians living below the poverty line. Uh, for years, the biggest trade unions have not defended the workers' interests. During the pandemic, for example, they didn't even think of taking to the streets to protest for the people who had lost their jobs and received no support. And today, it's the foreigners who have settled here who have the right to social housings. Italians should come first. OK, thanks for that. Thanks very much, Matthew. OK. Um, Hang on yeah, a sec, uh, Toby, let me, Toby, let me bring Matthew in. OK, oh, sorry. Yeah, just Toby probably say a lot more interesting things than me. Um, I think, I mean, you, you, you know, you talk about the CIA. I mean, the, the, the actual operation in Italy was was quite large. You know, I mean, they set up the, what was it, the Propaganda Due, the, the, the Masonic Lodge, which ran most of the government. Um, and they had like the, the underground networks. It was in Gladio, I think it was called. So, I mean, it, it ran this enormous operation in terms of controlling large chunks of the of, of the of the operation government so, um, directly and so on. I mean the thing is I mean the basic thing of course is that, that Italy really was, is one of these countries that should have gone uh, they should have overthrown capitalism in 1945 and perfect position to do so. You know the the, the, the um, partisans have basically were well enough armed to to take over the country. Um, but of course, Stalin told them that they, they can't, they shouldn't, and they couldn't. So they didn't. And therefore, you wind up with this, you know, it's a lot, isn't it? And if you don't do it, then obviously, you, you, you know, you wind up with this, this situation in which the, um, you know, it, it is classic, isn't it? You know, the, the defeat of the left it means that it opens that, that point. I think the other thing, you, you, you know, you talk about the whole question of, of, of immigration and the whole, you know, the whole business um, in terms of using, you know, the Mediterranean as a moat and all this sort of stuff. But it's that impact on Italy um, as the first point for the, for that for that movement from Africa, um, which obviously has a huge impact, in the, particularly in terms also, of course, the the falling living standards in Italy, which means that the people just ain't having kids because they can't afford to, you know. So it's it, it, it's in a very strange position in those terms, um, and and it you know it it, it is it quite in those terms quite quite racist and also quite you know, open to that whole position um, that the, the, the fascists have put forward. And none of the left, you know, the problem is, the problem is also. So I mean here, I mean at least you have the you know the left has actually tried to defend the. Um, you know, the rights of, of people in general, but that doesn't seem to have happened in, in Italy to any, to any great extent. So, I mean, the, 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 the crazy thing is, of course, that actually, you know, the previous position, you know, even under Mussolini's government, they couldn't get a, um, a fascist elected as, as mayor of Rome, but they can't now. It's ridiculous. You know, it's appalling in those terms. What would be interesting, though, would be to see what the state of actual ground organisation of the fascists and the far right is, yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Toby, do you want to come back on that? Um, well, with, with the, the far right, I think they're not, at the moment, they're not contesting elections. The, both Casa Pound and Forza Nuova did contest elections. Um, I think Cas Casa Pound is now claiming it's not a political party, but I mean, it's still a pretty organized thing. And they've got a mass, massive building in Rome, which they've been allowed to occupy for, you know, uh, I can't remember how long it could be, 15 years or something. If a, if, if a load of lefty squatters had done something like that, they would have been out far quicker. Um, but, um, yeah, the, 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 so uh, the, the, there are uh, fascist groups which, uh, I mean, Casa Pound, it has got, um, as someone was, was pointing out, have got, have got a, a strategy of, of actually giving the impression that they care at least about the white working class. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I don't know that the other groupings have, have done anything as, you know, cunning a, a, as as that. Um, coming back to the question of immigration and and uh, Maloney and, and Africa and immigration. Um, there's the whole thing of the uh, deals with Tunisia, the Tunisian dictatorship, you know, in favour of giving them money in order to keep uh, sub-Saharan Africans out of Italy, right? Um, the, the deal with 
Libyan, uh, you know, whatever the, the gov government or so-called governments of Libya and their, their um, customs people and coast guards and whatever these thugs <laughs> call themselves. I mean, the, the Italian Ita there it goes back to Maniti, who was a, a right-wing uh, PD uh, minister, the interior, uh, you know, go, go, going back, I think about seven years at the start of this deal with Libya. But I mean, you've got you've got deals with Libya, deals with Tunisia, um, attempts to deal with the Egyptian dictator as well. Not that I think many sub-Saharan Africans at the moment are coming via Egypt, but I mean, there, there is a whole thing about all this so-called Matei plan. Uh, I won't get into who Matei was, but I mean, he, he was killed by the Americans in all probability, but he, he was, uh, you know, to do with the Italian oil industry at another point in time when they were in conflict. With, with, he was a bit of a third world wisp because he was in, in conflict with the American oil companies. I mean, this is going back a lot, you know, some decades, but um, she uses the word Matei plan to claim that they're trying to help Africa. This is absolute rubbish. I mean, what it is, is any, which is the biggest, uh, Italian gas and oil um, company uh, getting their hands on raw materials in Africa. It's that and, uh, uh, and paying dictators to keep uh, uh, immigrants, black immigrants, out of Italy. That's what it's all about. And I mean, she, she's had the assistance of, of Ursula van der Leyen in, in a number of these trips to meet these dictators to discuss keeping people out of Fortress Europe. I mean, uh, I, I don't know that they call it Fortress Europe, but I think we do. Um, but so the, the question of immigration, um, also birth rate, yeah, uh, birth rate is very low in, in Italy, um, you know, it, it's one point something, of, I don't remember precisely what, but it's low, way below replacement, which would be 2.1, um, and, and yet you're keeping people out, and you, on the one hand you're saying in order to fund welfare, in order to fund old age pensions, that you need more people of working age in Italy, and yet you, you keep them out. Uh, and at the same time, you moan and moan and moan, as, as, as she does about, about the demographic winter. Uh, you know, she's, she's only got one kid herself, but uh, yeah, I mean, she also goes on about traditional uh, family and she's never, he never bothered to marry the father of this uh, uh, daughter and uh, she's no longer with him anyway. Um, and for that matter, the traditional family, uh, Salvini is two children, as far as I can remember, it's two children by two different women, and he's not with either of them anymore. Uh, so it, a lot of the stuff about the traditional family is absolutely ridiculous nonsense. But I mean, the, 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 the question, you know, on the one hand, you complain about population falling, which it is, uh, and that would cause problems, at least under capitalism, it would, would cause problems. I don't see how you could deal with it without having more um, people of young, uh, fit people of working age uh, doing a lot of the jobs that, that can't be done unless getting the money if you if you actually if they weren't um, employed in in the, in the sort of black market but if they were employed properly on proper contracts and the state was getting the taxes you you, you could fund pensions and things more easily but I mean it's irrational uh, but it, it is part of uh, the, the way she and the Lega before her uh, gain votes um, keep people out uh, let them drown. Uh, really is, is their attitude to, towards um, immigration. Uh, and yet they complain all the time about the, the falling birth rate. Um, okay. There may have been I... something else I was going to say about all that, but I've gotten it. No, no, no worries. No worries. Um, okay, so we're coming towards the end of this discussion. Are there any final points that people want to raise? Any issues? Or questions that they have. I'm just checking across to see if I've got everybody. Matthew, go on. Yeah, very, very briefly. I'm not, you know, uh, what's the impact of the uh, the the Israeli assault on Gaza? Um, I mean, obviously, the Italians are centrally involved. I mean, the Italian. Um, state-owned arms company Leonardo uh, actually has a, has a branch in, this, in Israel. It's got centrally involved in the manufacture and so on of their arms you know, for and in, it, and in Israel. So obviously you can see which way the Italian uh, ruling class and state are aimed. Um, Leonardo, of course, has a big big branch in Edinburgh too. Um, so, but you know, has there been a 
you know, political impact in terms of mobilization of people. Okay, on the question of, of the of Leonardo and the arms industry, um, I did uh, a few weeks ago write something which was published in the Weekly Worker about that. So, um, if you look, look at, at, at that, you can get more info and the extent to which uh, Leonardo's uh, fr front uh, thing called Medal, meaning Medio Oriente, uh, is, pretends to be an academic kind of thing and is. Uh, uh, is embedded in universities and got a lot of uh, vectors who are, you know, equivalent of vice chancellors on his board. Um, yeah, there, there, is, there is a big link between um, the Italian university system uh, and uh, the uh, arms industry and with uh, the arm, Italian arms industry with the Israeli arms industry. This is certainly the case. In terms of um, reaction to it, yes, the, the I'm not trying to claim that the student reaction in Italy is on the scale of what is currently going on on the American campuses, but yes, there is there is a response by uh, Italian students uh, over the Gaza war uh, and over the militarization of the, the universities. Um, so so that, that section of the population uh, is uh, involved. The, 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 there ha have been, I think, I think the demonstrations, by and large, uh, have been smaller than, than, than in London uh, over uh, Gaza, but there, there have been demonstrations. It, it, it's something which the government is very keen to crack down on, uh, including violently. And there there was, uh, back in late February of this year, about 70 school kids in Pisa were uh, uh, attacked by the, the police, it, it, you know, they, they, they didn't even have sticks or stones or anything. They were, and then they weren't wearing masks or anything like that. They were completely peaceful kids of 16, 17. And, and there was this lie put out by the police that they wanted to attack the synagogue in Pisa. I don't think they even knew where the synagogue in Pisa was anyway. And that wasn't their intention. They were uh, school kids protesting about the, 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 the war. Um, but um, the um, uh, the official line of the CJL is is for ceasefire, and as I said, said before, the um, um, Ellie Schlein, even though the right wing of the PD, the militarist people in the leadership, um, don't like what she's saying very much, but they don't dare actually criticise her on, on on Gaza. But I mean, she she is speaking for, for ceasefire, so so. Um, there has been a, a reaction uh, to 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 the the Gaza war here, but the, the the attempt is being made here all the time to suggest you know you you find one person who expresses some anti-Semitic thing and you claim the whole movement is. Uh, and there was during the Liberation Day um, stuff in in Milan, which was a a demonstration about hundred thousand strong. I mean, which mentioned the Gaza ceasefire, yes, and the U, U, and the Ukraine ceasefire as well. But I mean, it wasn't the primary thing for the liberation. Day march, but there, there was a clash on the edge of it that was caused by kids of um, North African descent. I think they're, they're born in Italy, but 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 of North African descent um, who who attacked um, some uh, Jewish grouping, which may have been a Zionist. Okay, but I mean they, they, they behaved very badly. But I mean they, they were nothing to do with the demonstration. They they. they probably didn't even know the demonstration was happening that day you know they were hanging around outside mcdonald's and suddenly started attacking uh, a bit of the the procession which had a, a jewish group in it um but um so anything that they can label as anti-semitic they do and they, they try to make out the whole thing is in the same way as they're doing in in the states about about it and i mean look you all know this anyway because of the way corbyn was destroyed um Okay, so there has been some reaction to, okay. to, to the Gaza war. Okay. I've got one more question, um, if anybody else hasn't. Go on, Caroline. Yeah, yeah just a quick one. Sorry, I should have put my name as Minnie. That's mm -hmm. my official name, Caroline. I don't no, I, don't know, I didn't know what to Sorry call you. That. Yeah, I, I know, I keep changing it. Um, yeah, just to say... Uh, yeah, I read that Maloney's against birthright citizenship proposals. That made me think, uh, Toby saying that about the what happened at the demo, um, which would give citizenship, including education rights to 
foreigners born in Italy. Um, and she's, she's trying to boost the birth rate of nationals to ease the need for migrant labour. That's just a comment I want to make. Thank you. OK, I've got um, just one more thing for you, which is my, my I mean, obviously, it sounds fantastically worrying what's going on in Italy. Um, but there's another worry um, about uh, whether she believes she can kind of be a spearhead in the European Union and to organise the, the far right in the European Union at that level. Do you think that she has that plan in her mind or, or no? Is she going to leave that to others? I think it may be in her mind, but the problem always in, within the European Union, European Parliament, is the far right to quarrel amongst themselves. I mean, um, she's fallen out a bit with a piss, or whatever I'm supposed to call them, the Polish lot. Um, uh, but, um, and, and the, more generally, there's, there's the division between her ECR, European Conservatives and Reformers, ridiculous name, but anyway, that's what they're called, um, uh, between her lot and the, the um, identity and democracy, which are the lot that include the RN and the AFD. Um, mm. the, 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 her lot, I think, I'm not sure all of them, but the majority of them are certainly Atlanticist, whilst the, the other grouping are more sympathetic to Putin. Um, so there, there is a division. Though she, she is trying to recruit um, Orban's party, but she waited till after the European election to, to into the ECR. Um, but uh, so, so yeah, there, there are attempts to, to unify the far right. Um, whether, I mean, our hope, hope, I suppose, in a cynical way, it won't work because they quarrel amongst mm. themselves. I mean, I remember years ago, the sort of when there were attempts to do this before, when Alessandro Mussolini, who's now forced to Italian anyway, but I mean, uh, when Alessandro Mussolini was trying to do this sort of thing, she then had a whacking great row with some Romanian woman in the European Parliament and holding fell apart. So, um, since they're ultra nationalists, um, they tend to quarrel with each other. But yeah, I think it probably is in their head. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, anything else from anybody? Anybody else want to pick Toby's brains? Okay. Shall we leave it there then, Toby? Are you? Are you? Uh, is there anything you else want to add, Toby? Before I kind of wrap up. Um, yeah, I think I didn't say anything about this changing the constitution, which is is the most serious thing she she could do. It's not because yes, she as the neo fascists uh, uh, had always wanted the idea was to to have a directly elected president, but they they've jumped that for now anyway. And the idea is a directly elected prime minister, uh, and the, the role of the president would be reduced, and the role of the parliament would be reduced, and the prime minister would be the powerful one. So they, um, and it, it's also as a concession to the Lega that they're, they're they're carrying proposals for devolution to the extreme, which would be, uh, differentiated autonomy, as it's called, which would mean there'd be greater unevenness in, in resources and powers between the different regions, and it would we weaken the nation, which of course doesn't quite make sense in terms of the nationalism of uh, of Maloney's law. But um, they, they want to destroy the constitution of 48, which, you know, um, the constitution that came out of the resistance. Look, I know we could start arguing, oh, there is, it would have been better for the resistance <laughs> to take over by uh, communist guerrillas. But I mean, in terms of what actually happened, look, the, the constitution of 48 has got some very good bits in it. I know it wasn't socialist revolution, but it is a, it is a better constitution than many countries. And it, 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 they want to destroy it because they associate it with the resistance. Okay. On that note, can I thank you, Toby, for presenting and asking, answering a load of questions, actually, <laughs> on the hoof. So thank you very much for that. I think it was a really, really good presentation you made. And I learned a lot from it, actually. I don't know about anybody else, but I'd like to thank you for that. Um, I'd like to thank everybody else who took part and posed questions and made points and uh, got involved in the discussion and even thank those who were listening in because it was, there was a lot to listen to actually and it was really, really interesting, I thought. Um, just before I sign off, um, I want to let you know that in a fortnight on May the 13th, we'll be discussing how 
the socialist and Marxist left fared in the local elections. And we want to invite you to what's going to be a lively debate about socialists and communists and electoral strategy. So put that one in. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the results come out and see how all these independent and far left and socialist candidates do. So there's going to be a lot to discuss, I think. Um, with that, I think I'll bid you good night and, and thank you for attending. And thanks again, Toby. Really good, really good event. Thank you.